Hi, I'm Tracy and I'm an environmental educator here at Green Acres. Today I want to talk about pond ecosystems. Now a lot of times when we think of a pond, we think of the macrofauna, those larger animals like ducks or frogs or turtles. But today I want us to really think about the whole ecosystem. And we get to go explore two different ponds today, but I need your help. I'd like to build a food web along the way. A food web often tells us about the feeding relationship of a community, but it can also tell us about how a whole ecosystem is interconnected. So let's start with producers. What are some producers you might find around a pond? Plants, that's right. So you may have seen algae or cattail or lilies, things like that. Those are our producers. What about consumers? They do not produce their own food. They consume other organisms for their energy. So what do you think we'll find in a pond ecosystem? Well, I have a tool to collect some of those producers and consumers. So while I give this a little whirl, I want you to start guessing what you think I'll catch. All right, you may have guessed that algae, some insects, a fish, a turtle, a great blue heron? Ah, not this time. However, here we go. Oh. Hmm, did you say nothing? Let's take a closer look. All right, well, if you look and you see those little things floating around, you might even start to see some movement. That's plankton. That is singular and multicellular organisms, the life, the base of the food chain in our pond ecosystem. Now you might think that doesn't look like much. Those are tiny. Well, for our pond ecosystem, that's actually the base of a food chain. And depending on the diversity of the species or the population size, it can change the whole thing. It could cause algal blooms or change the fish population, which then changes the insect populations and can even go further and further outside of the ecosystem to other habitats. So now we're gonna check out our other pond ecosystem and do a little adding to our food web. Here we are at the other pond. It looks a little different, doesn't it? Well, another really important part of a pond ecosystem is the leaf litter and muck at the bottom of a pond. So I went ahead and I took a sample and I collected some for us to look through and see what pond critters we might find today. So inside some of this leaf litter and pond, there are gonna be the bacteria and decomposers, but there are a lot of things, those consumers we talked about, that are gonna use it for a shelter and use it for food. So I have some friends that I thought you might wanna check out. The first is a, a producer actually, and this is our duckweed. All right, so this is one of the smallest flowering plants. And if you look behind me, it's covered. So with a little bit of rain runoff and fertilizer from our cow pastures, we had a big bloom and now we have a lot of duckweed. And actually, I just noticed, if you look even closer, there are some small insects I don't even know what they are. That's the beauty of an ecosystem. There are hundreds or thousands of things I can't even ID, but could definitely be food for an animal. All right, another one you might recognize. A tadpole, that's right. Now, tadpole, one of our consumers, and in the tadpole stage, they start off eating plants, and then they can start to eat those insects. And when it's a frog, do you know what they eat? Some of our bullfrogs can even eat mice and bats and ducklings. Talk about impacting an ecosystem. And another one here. This is a whirligig beetle. They're scavengers. So they're eating those plants, like our leaf litter here, and our duckweed, as well as eating insects. Next up, we have another consumer, maybe a secondary consumer, because 
These insects are dragonfly nymphs. These baby dragonflies are predators and eat other insects, other aquatic insects. And something I think is really neat thinking about the whole ecosystem is when they're babies, they're eating insects from the water, right? But when they emerge as an adult dragonfly, they're zooming around eating the insects out of the air. So that's impacting the habitats around it. And here we have nematodes. Oh yeah, some worms. And these are fun to watch move around. And these are neat because there are tons in the leaf litter and they're gonna help be decomposers. They're gonna eat the plants and they can actually live inside other organisms like fish and turtles and some of those bigger animals that live in a pond. And they can live inside other organisms, meaning they're parasitic. And lastly, speaking of parasites, look what I found, a leech. And these are so fun to watch move. And have you heard what leeches eat? Blood, that's right. So they'll actually cling on to those larger macrofauna like we talked about, the fish, the turtles, maybe some ducks, and they're gonna drink the blood for their energy. So all of these things I found just here in the leaf litter and the muck at the bottom of the pond, and it has an effect on the whole ecosystem. and Everything is interconnected. Now that we've looked at both ponds, I wanna wrap it up and look at a summary of the food web that we've built together. So here is an example of a food web from a pond ecosystem with a lot of examples that we actually found today on our adventure. Now, if you remember, the plankton, the base of the food chain. So even though they're microscopic, they can have an important role in our ecosystem. Phytoplankton plants, zooplankton, our consumers, all the way up through remembering how important it is for the different life stages of an animal, like the dragonfly nymph or a tadpole. It's gonna eat different things, whether it's an early tadpole, a developed tadpole, or even a frog. And then things that get a little bit bigger, like we talked about, turtles, or even a great blue heron. And those are things that might go into different habitats. So good job building a food web with me today at the pond site. Thanks for coming and we'll see you next time here at Green Acres.